so I've got the seat in. We got all the brackets put on and I've got the seat moved back as far as it can go. Pretty much in the position. I don't think they're gonna slide them forward or anything. So we're gonna keep it back as far as we can and give the kids as much leg room as possible. So the next step here, um, no directions or anything with the seat. I even tried to call HSP several times and never received an answer or a call back. So we're just gonna do this, uh, you know, the old school way and figure it out on our own. So when you take the center console pieces off, yeah, the last piece is this one in the front that has the uh, forward cup holders. And then you've got basically three pieces here for the back, okay? And these are all been cut now. Um, so I started with this piece in the back. This is the rear piece. There are two mounting locations here and here that correspond to these. So basically I just cut this little piece straight across. It had a little tab sticking out of it, um, which is part of the next piece uh, in the back there. So give you a good look at that. Okay, so that'll go down into here. And that'll bolt right up to there. I'm just gonna cut, put a couple bolts in it just to hold it. Okay, so that's where that goes. The next piece is, it looks like this. And I should just show, this is the back. This would be the front. These two holes here line up with two holes that are in this, as well as these two pieces here. So that's where the screws will go into once they've gone through these bottom two pieces. So this piece, I set it on the piece that's already installed on the ground, matched up where the old bolt holes were, and then just drew a line where I had cut this in the back. So now this piece will just slide right in here, set something like that. These holes line up, you probably can't see it, but they do. They line up there as well as the holes that'll mount right here. And then on top of that will be the cup holders for the rear passengers. So that'll go in something like this. Okay, once those are all lined up, there's two screws that come from underneath and screw into here. And then there's one in the center of the front cup holder. And essentially that's what it'll look like once it's all bolted up. And then you can put your side panels in here. That'll be the next thing I will, uh, need to trim those you know this one this one these up here not so much but when you get to here the back I think it's just one panel actually that comes about to right here that'll also need to be trimmed so that's what I'll end up doing next is just uh putting that in there and kind of marking it and uh and cutting that away so hopefully that helps you guys and uh you know it fits right in there where that pocket is again I haven't cut this yet that'll have to be cut next as you can see what would happen, right? The, the middle child's gonna, his legs are gonna come through here and you know, that's not gonna be good. So this whole thing's gonna end up going away. But that's how I modified the center console piece for this HSP seat. Again, I was hoping for some instructions in the uh, with it, but basically the seat came on a pallet wrapped in plastic and that was it. I went onto their website. I didn't see any instructions. Um, so I tried contacting them, uh, several times and didn't get an answer. The other thing I had to do when I put the stock seat sliders back in, I did have to shim those. I think I talked uh, talked about that before and I ended up just using some nylon, uh, spacers that, um, I got at my local hardware store and whichever ones I got, I think they were about three eighths of an inch thick. That worked out perfectly. The mounting bracket on the seat clears the slide rollers right there just perfectly so all right on to the next thing all right i just got done working on these center console panels for the back 
Just got the front just kind of sitting in there right now. Just wanted to show you how this all worked out. So showed you how I trimmed all of this and made this all fit and everything. And then, so this front panel here, nothing to cut. The next little piece on both sides, it's the same. Uh, nothing to cut here. So all this will end up going together once I tighten all the screws and everything. So the two that I had to modify were the last pieces back here on both sides. And it was pretty simple actually. Um, again, just like before, I just lined up where I had cut all this, put the pieces together on the floor and drew a line that went down to about right here at the bottom of the seat and then took that point um, it actually slopes down as it goes back. And I, I don't think you'll be able to see back in there very well, but you can kind of see it there, I guess. And uh, as it slopes back, it goes down because that's how the seat goes. But I did retain, um, to keep the little retainers there. Let's see if we can get in here and show you. Those spots right there. So the uh, female part is part of this piece here on both sides. And I was able to keep those because as I sloped it to the back on both sides, I made sure I went up enough to, uh, to keep that. So just keep that in mind. Otherwise those panels will probably flop around a little bit, but I think that came out good. Show you the other side here. say all this will end up kind of going back together once I get it bolted there and get the other pieces in but uh, you know overall I'm pretty satisfied with that all right I uh, just thought I'd take a couple minutes here and give you an update on kind of what's been going on so I got the roof rack on just kind of temporarily I got one or two bolts in it right now uh, I got the plates here uh, this is for the link system you can buy those little adapters you bolt them in with four bolts and then you can have shovel racks and all kinds of different attachments there uh, for that that's on all four or on both sides there's four plates uh, for that i also installed the rigid cube lights just mounted those with the hardware that came from rigid same thing with the wiring this is all rigid wiring and i just zip tie that up and out of the way and then I put a little wire loom on it. I drill a hole right here in this uh, stem and put a grommet in there. And then I do the same thing right here. I drill a hole in the base plate of that. Same thing, grommet. And then the wire, just push up on this a little bit. You can see the wire sticking out there, okay? What I do is I shave or cut off a little bit of this flange piece that's coming out. And that allows my wires to get down underneath there and get tucked back in so they don't get pinched when the uh, roof comes down. Hopefully we can see that. You can see them right back in there. And then I add a grommet right here into this plate, kind of a big one. Um, it has a larger opening than, the, than these wires, obviously, but that's fine. It's a pretty good size. I think it's about an inch diameter grommet. So I add that in there. And then the wires get tucked back towards the front of the machine. I've got one little zip tie here at the very top to hold it in. And then they get pushed back into this here. And the retainer for the light holds it in place. You see the wires come down here. And I'm not sure if it's like it on every machine, but both sides of this machine and my last Maverick X3 that I did as well, both 22 year models, they only bolt the roll cage down with three out of the four bolts. Not sure why, not sure if that's how it is on every single one, but I take advantage of that one bolt that's missing and I use that hole to run my wires through. A uh, little piece of wire loom on these black and red wires to protect them. And then the other wire next to that is for the rock lights. Okay, and then those run down underneath here, right there. And then I run them down here. Now what I have here is 
heat shrink bullet connectors for both sides. And the reason I do this is just in case the roof rack needs to come off, you can undo these and pull those wires all the way back up through the uh, roll cage plate and everything else, and you can take your roof rack off. You don't have to cut wires or anything like that. Um, I've done that several times on these machines, just in case somebody wants to ever remove the roof rack. And then I run the wires down and follow everything else, get that all zip tied up and out of the way. So hopefully that makes sense, right? If you disconnected this, you know, the the wire that's all in here wouldn't come out because you'd have to take that connector apart. So that's why I do the bullet connectors underneath there. You could just unbolt the cage, start feeding the wires back up from underneath there, back up through here. They'll come through that big grommet. They'll even come through the hole that's in the roof here because I oversize that. And the whole thing will come up and you'll have, you know, a now, two foot long pigtail of wires with the bullet connectors on the end of it, just in case. Um, another thing I finished up here was the wiring for the uh, whips. And basically, there it is right there. That's got the plug on the end of it. Again, you can get those through Gorilla Whips. And I just notched this piece here just a little bit. You know, that way this isn't just sitting here flopping when you don't have the, the whips on and it gives you a spot to tuck that out of the way. Did that on both sides. So once you have the wires ran for the uh, rear lights, those run down and around. You can see them right there. And then I tied them together, positive from both sides, ground from both sides. Grounds go down and go to the ground on the battery side and the positive goes to the relay from Sam's backup lights. So that is uh, how those lights will get powered through that fuse and relay and everything over there in the battery compartment. You can see there, I've got all the Gorilla rock lights and the whip lights, uh, the alpha controller and the amplifier just kind of sitting there. Kind of show you that here. Finally got this kind of positioned where I want it. I'll get all this tucked up and everything here and tidied up. Um, this is the relay that comes with the Gorilla Whips. Basically this wiring for the most part is from there as well as the fuse. I went uh, to the bus bar here, tied in uh, there. Here is the back for the switch. And I run the whips and the rock lights on 24 power. So that's what this line right here is, that red one there, number two. And that allows you to run the whips and not have to have the machine on. Uh, this one here is your ignition, so that'll light up part of the switch when you turn the ignition on. Otherwise, you do have power all the time. This is the trigger that goes out to the relay. The relay then has power, 24 power also going back to the bus bar up there. And then that power comes and goes into the alpha controller and then I have one of the channels of the alpha controller going out to the amplifier for the rock lights okay there's the center console piece there with the new whip light switch now on some of the machines I believe they're older ones maybe before 2021 or 2022 they used to have the override switch here for reverse, but now it's up here. So if you have one there, just um, that's totally fine. I was going to put the whip switch there, but I found that the this piece here actually hit right here, and I wasn't able to do that. So I went ahead and just moved over to that first position. That gives them a couple more options uh, for later on down the road if they need additional switches thing's going to be once I kind of get that all buttoned up it's going to be finishing up the heater now that I've got the center console pieces on the back cut I know kind of where now I can put the the ports for the heater this will get a Y adapter on it and little pieces of hose with a couple of more vents that'll go back out in there somewhere yeah probably like right here this is where I'm thinking I'm gonna I'll end up kind of running it this way and then probably exiting it right here dumping it out onto the rear passenger's feet is kind of the idea at this point. We'll figure out that out when we get there. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you 
is the rear grab bar. So the original thought um, that I had was I was going to remove this completely. Um, but then, I, I, as I said uh, in a couple of minutes earlier in the video, uh, I had thought maybe that I could just cut this off a little bit and give it a try. So that's what I did. Um, I came down five and a half inches from here down to here, cut that completely off and then cleaned up the, the burrs that are on that. Uh, that's a tip there because I didn't the first time and I couldn't get this on. It was really, really difficult. So, uh, once I cleaned up the burrs on the end where I cut it, got them cleaned up really good, a little bit of WD 40 on the inside of this rubber here. And I just kind of stood up above it here and pulled up on it on both sides, worked it side to side and that seems awesome. So I think that'll work just fine. Should still give the center child some leg room here, but it'll also allow uh, an adult, if there's adults on either side riding in the machine, give them something to grab onto uh, when the driver here is getting a little Western. So hopefully that works out good uh, for them rather than just, you know, as I had originally said, I, I thought maybe I might just cut this completely off, but I was able to salvage that and it's not going anywhere. I wasn't worried about putting the bolts back in it. You know, there's two bolts, one on each side here, um, going through a retainer on the inside of that. And I don't think it's needed. So I'm gonna run it with that right there. Okay, all right, on to the next step, getting this light bar wired up. So moved on to doing the light bar up front here. This is a 40 inch single row from Rigid. Uh, a couple of things that I, I most of the time I swap out. Again, it's just me. I like to get a shorter bolt, about a quarter inch shorter. So that way all these threads aren't showing. So right now I'm just using the stock hardware for this light bar for now. Okay, so this is how I did the wiring on this. I did it differently than what I was just talking about. Rather than going from the battery sneaking all the way down here and coming up the B pillar like I said that the other dealership had done excuse me had done uh they're not dumb but how they had done it uh I decided to do it differently I decided to just go and come in here drill a hole in this uh post here and then I drilled another hole in the base plate of the post drilled a hole in the roof and then just fed my wires down into here uh, about right in here is where those wires will run out and you'll have to make your connection to the harness that comes with it, the wire harness that comes with the lights. Um, so I can show you kind of how I did that there. 7 16 hole with a grommet. This hole here uh, in the plate, I just oversized that to at least about a half an inch, maybe even bigger, just to allow a little bit of wiggle room for this wire in case this hole and this hole didn't match up exactly. So that allows that wire to move around a little bit. So this is what it looks like on the inside. I'm gonna put a little uh, silicone in there when I put everything back together. I'm still waiting on the windshield, so I have to leave all this uh, loose so I can get the windshield brackets up into here. But this grommet here, will actually go into the cage right there. Again, another 7 16 hole right there. And then I fed the wire down through the A pillar. And you'll see there's a hole already in the A pillar right there. So I just used that. I brought my wire up here and out, and then from there and out, made my uh, connection with uh, heat shrink butt connectors, and then just fed that wire back down into here. Now I have a tendency to leave a little bit of a loop here and the reason I do that is that allows me to be able to have a spot to pull up on those wires if I ever needed to replace the light bar or the customer ever needed to replace the light bar. It gives them an opportunity to, uh, a little bit easier of fishing the wires out of the A pillar. I've done them before where I push the wires in and then they're a pain in the ass to get a hook tool in there and and get it out. So this is gonna be hidden by the frame of the windshield. So I just leave a little loop there. And again, it allows you to be able to pull up on those wires easier if you ever had to replace that. So the wires continue down here, right? And then inside here,
there's the end of the A-pillar. I oversized that hole to about a half inch and that allows the this cable here with the sheathing on it to be able to move freely in there. Hopefully I can show you that. Okay. And then this will just get coiled up in here. Tucked back up underneath there, all zip tied up. And then here on the switch, so the blue wire, this blue, this blue, that red, and the big black wire are all from the harness that comes with the light bar. I added this little jumper wire that goes over to my other ground for the other light that I have. And then this wire right here will go over to the keyed bus bar power underneath the dash up underneath there. And what that does is that lights up this indicator bar on the switch. So when you have the key on, that bottom light is on. When you throw the switch, this top light is on, okay? And then on the back of the switch, just so you guys can see, these top two are ground. This one right here is 24 hour power is how I wire it. Uh, just in case you need the light bar and don't have to turn on the machine. This is the out, which is the blue wire. And then this is that extra wire that I added for the ignition or keyed source. So speaking of that, um, power coming out of the relay, I loop that back around, come over to here. And then again, like I just said, I tie into the bus bar here with the ground and then the power that does have a fuse on it back underneath there goes to 24 hour power. And again, I just do that with things like the light bar and the whips and the rock lights, just so that way you don't have to have the machine running if you need that. Now, should you sit there for a long period of time with the light bar running um, without the machine running? No, but if you need to throw on that light bar just for a quick instance, um, it's not gonna hurt anything, not gonna drain your battery. Same thing with the rock lights. We have sat around with no uh, machines running and we've had our rock lights and our whips going uh, for a couple of hours while we're sitting eating dinner or lunch or whatever it is uh, on these night rides that we do. And nobody ever has a power uh, problem with the battery. So anyway, that's how I did it. I know other people do it completely different. But again, like I said, I have a pet peeve about wires just kind of hanging out everywhere. I tried to keep this as tight and, you know, uh, hidden as much as I can. That's why I put things into uh, roll bars, get them into the A-pillar or get them into this uh, post here as much as I can. I just like everything hidden out of the way. So again, that's how I do it. There you go. All right, on to the next thing. All right, an update on progress on this machine. So finally got the roof rack installed. Got the new windshield from Inner Demon Motorsports. Still waiting on the bezels and the block off plates here because those are getting color matched to the uh, desert sand color uh, for this machine. So waiting on those, it'll be a couple more days. Got a new windshield wiper installed. It's just a manual wiper. So the windshield mounts to the roll cage with these clamps. There's four of them, one here, one on the opposite side. And then there's actually two that are up here. Um, so I like it. it uh, it's pretty cool, pretty sleek looking. So it's pretty happy about that. Uh, got the roof rack all secured, got all these bolts and everything tightened, all those. Again, all the wiring for the lights come down through these pillars here. Same thing up front here. As I talked about before, I drill a hole, put a grommet in there, then it goes through the plastic down inside there, and then comes down and and uh, through the A pillar here, and then down underneath where the uh, kick plates are underneath there, so... I did reroute the heater hoses. I didn't really like how they were uh, originally installed, so I had to pull these panels back off and I just got those hoses here rerouted. Um, 
and got the wires all figured out, got the plugs and everything on there. So I need to just put this panel back in here, but you can see the duct work that comes around. There's a Y right there and it splits off and then comes to these vents, one on each side here, and that allows to some heat back into the foot area for the passengers. So next thing is to get the rear seat put back in here. Um, as I talked about earlier, I cut these panels. Everything is secured down now. This is the amplifier and the alpha controller for the whips and the rock lights. I've tested all that stuff, so it's all good and ready to go. Just need to get the seat back in here, do a little cutting in the rear uh, poly windshield there for the harness and getting close to getting this thing wrapped up. Oh, also forgot. We're going to be installing some side mirrors, the Can-Am side mirrors. Finally got those. So I just started kind of pulling this off here, seeing what it takes to install that. So they have a template that goes in here. You line it up on that one hole and you're going to have to drill a new hole through this little plate here. And then there'll be two holes that'll go through the side here as well. And then that uh, mirror mounts to the side of the door. So, okay. I got the mirrors installed. Those are pretty simple to do. So you're gonna take this screw out here. This whole plastic piece is gonna come off. And then they give you a template to drill through this plate that's in the back. And I didn't actually have the other template that they were supposed to provide which is you take this piece of paper and you drape it over the door here and it gives you the two locations to uh, use a one inch hole saw and drill through the plastic here. So I didn't have that. So I just kind of had to do what I could do and line up the, the pieces on the back of the mirror, just kind of put a mark there and then I drilled through and I didn't have a one inch hole saw. So I just used a step bit um just like that All right and that got me close this one goes to three quarter and then i used a bigger one that i have that goes up to i think almost an uh, inch and a half got it up to the inch just kind of cleaned it up a little bit and then what they say is be aware of there are two pieces of plastic here uh, on this back hole that you need to remove and what that does is allows the mount for the mirror to set all the way flush or up against this plate that's in the back. So if you left that one piece of plastic in there and you didn't cut that out, this hole right here or this part of the mirror right here would actually be sticking out just a little bit about the thickness of this plastic. So be aware of that when you put those mirrors on that the back hole has two pieces of plastic. Make sure you cut uh, a one inch diameter hole in that second piece of plastic. Otherwise the mirror, the back part of it will not be flush with the door. Okay. The next thing I got installed is the HSP seat. Um, definitely took two people to get this in. And my recommendation is, I guess, depending on which side you're going to put it in from, I chose to push it in from the driver's side. So I took the seat mounts off on the passenger side and that allowed me to get up and over the center console um, because when these things were on I just was hitting that plastic right there so maybe that's a tip for you when you're putting one of these seats in uh, again I use some nylon spacers here as you can see if those spacers are not there then this mounting bracket will actually rub it will actually sit on this and won't even allow this part to be flush with this when you bolt it down. I, again, I tried to call HSP several times, uh, basically got tired of leaving voicemails and never got an answer back. And it's been uh, three weeks ago now. So uh, I just did this, these brackets or this plate, excuse me. Now uh, you can see there, there's a gap there between it and the roller. Uh, so that seat now can slide back and forth freely. Um, what else on this? When you tighten these down here, just be aware, don't get in there with an impact and start tightening them down. You know, this is uh, hollow, 
here so that you're just going to keep squeezing that and, and deform it so just get it to where the nuts are tight and that's it so i did get the one harness that they want put in in the middle got that put in this goes down underneath the seat and ties into the bolt that's in the back corner over here and then here i just took my dremel tool and made some cuts in this rear window and that allows the harness to go up and around the roll cage in the back, this piece here. And then this will just need to be adjusted for the kid once we get them in here and get them all sized up. So I am gonna put a filler piece in here. Not sure what that's gonna be quite yet, just because you know you could you put your hand down in there and I'm sure there this would probably be a spot where dust can uh, bellow up from. So I'm gonna kind of plug that off. I'm thinking maybe like a piece of foam or something down in there, um, paint it black or something. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do there yet. So I think that's pretty much it. I got this thing pretty well wrapped up. Um, I need to tension the winch, um, do a couple other things. Uh, I didn't show you guys what I did here, but when I put all these vent uh, tubes in here for the heater, this panel was kind of sticking out a little bit, especially right in here. So what I did, I took a piece of plastic that I had cut out when I cut all these pieces up. And um, I just used some high strength adhesive on the back side of that. So there'll be a little tab that will actually stick back underneath here and help hold that panel from from pulling out. So the reason I don't have that in yet is because that adhesive is still curing. So um, other than that, it's going to be get the other seats back in and give this thing a wash. And of course, go over my list of stuff that I, that I had to do to make sure that I got everything pretty well wrapped up. And then again, still waiting on the bezels here and the block off plates. So other than that, I think everything is, I think it's fine. All right, cool. All right, guys, I just wrapped up this 2022 X3 Turbo RR. Just got everything wrapped up and cleaned, and the customer's coming to pick it up here today, this afternoon. So I thought I'd had one opportunity left to do a little quick walk around, show you everything that I put on this machine. So let's start up here at the front. Okay, we've got the Can-Am front bumper. We've got a worn winch with synthetic rope. The new accent lights for the Ryko turn signal kit. Underneath there, we've got the horn. Again, I always upgrade that horn that comes in the Ryko uh, kit. We've got our rock lights mounted underneath there. Front windshield from Inner Demon Motorsports. When you get these, these the bezels here are probably going to be a different color than mine. Uh, I think they said they're going to make them titanium, so kind of a gray color. Uh, I actually had them uh, color match these as best they could to the sand uh, color that's on this machine. So you can see that, you know, there. Um, so they do have these block off plates. So normally the vents would be all open. You undo these little thumb screws and they have a plate that's on the back inside of the windshield and that just blocks all those vents off. Um, so when you're in a situation, you know, in the winter and you're still riding or if it is cool out on a night ride, you can block those off uh, if you like. I think most of the time people would agree that we would have those block off plates off so the vents would be open. It's just my opinion and, and uh, what I've come across most of the time. Okay, next thing is Can-Am roof rack. Pretty simple to go on once you get everything lined up and all the bolts uh, secure, everything's good. Rigid light bar, that's a 40 inch single row. Down here to the Can-Am mirrors. Kind of told you about how those mount and make sure you drill through the two layers of plastic on that back uh, mounting location, otherwise the mirror will not sit flat 
Okay, to the back here, rigid cube lights. Again, these are the diffused lights, so you see that the glass kind of looks fractured. Okay, so I'm curious uh, how those are going to work out. It's my first time using these, and uh, yeah, we'll see how those work out. I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to review on those. And Gorilla Whips, same as some of my other videos. Again, just a quick twist, and those come off. And then you can undo this connection right here. As I showed you before, once you unconnect this, there's a little plug that I get from Gorilla Whips. And then you can take that wire and put it right down into here and hide that so it's just not flopping in the wind as you're going down the road. All right, the other rock light is back here. Here we have the HSP seat all installed uh, with the beard harness for the center child. This is the one with the automotive style uh, latch assembly. So again, it looks just like an automotive. I found it it uh to be easier on kids to to be able to latch this assembly themselves rather than the other one that cams over uh, if you see that so if you do have kids i recommend this kind of style uh, i had the same style set up in my machine for my three kids as well so again hspc hsp seat went in um i told you about the modifications i made to the bottom down there I did actually modify the seat cushion a little bit right here just because of how uh, the stock seat belt came up through there. So I just cut a little piece out of uh, the foam that's in there, just enough. Uh, otherwise it was kind of uh, binding up a little bit in there. And then I took those pieces of foam and painted them a little black and put them right here as filler pieces. So, okay, here is the back vents for the heater. One on both sides, so that was get a get a little warm air back here to the kids' feet. I'll talk to you about how I modified this grab handle, so that hopefully will work great. The middle child can get in here. You know he's going to have to straddle the center console here a little bit, but still gives a good grab handle for the kids if they need, or uh, you know if you end up throwing a couple adults back in here, it gets, still gives them a spot to to grab. All right, so the heater is mounted down here in the floor underneath the driver's seat. Ran two pieces of the duct work up over here. One turns off with a Y fitting and goes to the feet area. One right there and one on the opposite side. And then the other duct comes up into the dash and also splits for the front uh, defrosters there. Ryko turn signal kit, as I told you before, it's got the, uh, the little jumper wire that goes to the instrument cluster so you can have those lights in the, in the uh, instrument cluster, cluster, excuse me, light up when you turn the turn signal up and down for the left and right. Again, rocks, uh, rocker switches are coming from over the river and through the woods. Uh, again, I like those switches because they have the same dimples as the stock switches and then orange backlit just again, just like the stock switches. Winch switch here, heater switch. Down there we've got the switch for the whips and the rock lights. And then remember I kind of showed you how I modified the center console pieces and these panels down in here uh, for, for the new seat being installed. Wanted to show you one other thing here that I remembered. A lot of people wonder <laughs> where to put the mount for the switch, uh, the wired switch for your re winch remote, right? This thing, well, the plug can go right here. Can-Am already has a spot for it. There's already, um, I think there was already holes there actually. Uh, so it's all ready to go right there. So it's hidden out of the way. You can keep your remote here. And then as usual, I always mark this right there and right there, if you can see that. And then that way those two pieces line up and I, you know, I'm not fumbling trying to figure out where it goes and I don't break any of those male connectors. I know exactly where it goes right there. Every time I just line up those little marks, just take a silver Sharpie and make those two marks. Again, that's just what I do. 
All right, I think that's about it, guys. Um, again, appreciate you stopping by my channel and checking out the videos that I make. Uh, try to keep it as informative as possible and give you some tips on things that I do just as an installer. Um, so hopefully that helps you guys uh, with your install and your build as well. All right, so like and subscribe as always. Put a comment down there if you have a question about a product that I use or about an install or how I do something. If you want more clarity on something, do that. And I'll be try, uh, try to comment as quickly as I can. Usually it's within a day or two. So appreciate the views, appreciate the likes. And to all my new subscribers again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.